and Lunar Regolith Acceleration Chamber 01. Next slide, please. So our problem statement is lunar dust decontamination before base entrance. And here on your left, you can see a simple full setup of the prototype Draco we have. And on the right, you have the exploded view. Next slide, please. Um, the motivation. Right, so everybody knows that um, lunar dust is charged in nature. Um, that leads to a lot of different problems. Um, for example, they cover different equipment such as rovers, solar panel, etc., which could lead to overheating. Specifically to spacesuit, they can accumulate in joint, and astronauts might find it harder to move joint and even like a lot more damages in long term. So because of the electrostatic effects that Luna does have as well, they are harder to remove than normal dust particles. And we think that going forward with our project, the scientific value and contribution we could have is that astronaut and lunar base can have um, less reliance on air filtration system within the base itself. And also the quality of spacesuits can, can be conserved in longer time. Next slide, please. So our solution approach. We started off with brainstorming a variety of different ideas. And then we went off into different teams to mainly focus on peer review research papers and off of that, we did a trade-off between different ideas via a design matrix. And at the end of it, we decided that magnetic and EM field might be our best solution. We came up with vacuum chamber, that sort of method, but we thought air might be too precious to be used in space. And after that, we've decided that we could focus on capture, which is the first part of the problem. And we came up with a few ideas for different sort of ways to clean up the lunar dust after they are captured, such as using different medium to capture that instead. Um, after that, we came up with different ways to verify whether our experiment or Draco would work, and Damien would go into more details with that later on. And Francis from our team actually did some math to find out how, many, how much coils we would actually need in this prototype in order to create the magnetic field that we would need. Next slide, please. So here is an exploded view of Draco. So starting from the bottom, we have the tray that's easy access to, and that's gather dust, and astronaut could just grab that. Um, we picked Pyrex tank because of easier observation purposes. Metallic plates on the sides are supported and slaughtered in via the support system that's from the top lid, and that could create a static magnetic field for the lunar dust. Coils is just right under the top lid, and that creates an EM field. Um, yeah, so I think it's important to um, emphasize that this is a prototype and hopefully the astronaut could extend both arms into the tank and that's how we're going to test out if Draco will work effectively. And going forward, we're hoping to scale this up and hopefully to a human-sized chamber. Next slide, please. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, now um, I'm going to talk with you about uh, verification and validation. It's uh, how do we test th this Draco without access to lunar dust, right? Uh, so uh, our team and I thought about one material uh, here on Earth that has the, roughly the same chemical composition and roughly the same size as lunar dust and can be charged as well. It's volcanic ash. Uh, could you pass to the next slide, please? Um, every type of uh, ash will be uh, tested. I mean, there are different types of ashes and they will all be tested. Um, so we are mainly referencing to um, Professor Harper's uh, paper where he charges uh, a, um, volcanic ash with this apparatus. And uh, astronauts during a Asclepios mission with this charged ash would introduce their contaminated arms um, and uh, quant uh, quantify the amount of ash introduced and collected with Draco's assistance and then analyze the, uh, their results. It is important to note that we also thought on establishing protocols. Uh, could you pass to the next slide, please? First of all, in addition to uh, rubbing their hands, uh, there will be de um, decontamination protocol at base entry to assist a Draco-1 and simulate daily life of real astronauts on the moon or on Mars. And secondly, uh, because astronauts are uh, handling uh, volcanic ash, can you pass to the next slide, please? Uh, basic PPE like goggles and um, N95 masks will be needed for safety reasons. And finally, um, uh, this um, Draco uh, creates electromagnetic fields generated by the metallic plates and coils. 
Um, and, so, and so taking into account the inner wiring of the suits is essential and will be also tested in the uh, Asclepios uh, missions. Uh, next slide, please. For uh, the timeline, to take into consideration the timeline of in the future. Uh, we can't hear you very well. I don't know completed. if you can Hello, can you hear me? I have an unstable uh, connection. Yeah, it's better now. So uh, to sum up, uh, it's, uh, we, we took into consideration the uh, inner wiring of, um, of the Draco system uh, that has to be designed and could take lots of time. And finally, uh, the experimentation uh, would, would be during the Asclepius mission and the documentation would give uh, Draco more scientific way after the, um, the mission. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding cost approximation, our budget is quite small for uh, the first prototype of Draco 1. However, it is not finalized. Uh, we must take into account the Pyrex container. Um, uh, we made contact with Pyrex, um, but we'll receive a confirmation on the price shortly. And um, regarding the volcanic ash, uh, there are uh, two options. One would be uh, to um, um, buy some on the, uh, the market if available, and if not, uh, would be, uh, or to contact uh, other universities like uh, UNIL, or to get the samples ourselves. And next, next slide, please. And pass to Jane. Yeah, so because astronauts are basically a test subject um, for this experiment, um, it's one of our priorities to make sure that we are minimizing the risks that are proposed um, post to the astronaut. Next slide, please. So we came up with um, a sort of scoring higher um, hazard hierarchy schematics to make sure if, if there's certain ha hazard that we need to look out for. So we have parameters like hazard, um, potential consequences that could lead into, and also different type of control measures that we have to take into account. Next slide, please. So yeah, so for this Draco prototype, we haven't found anything that we need to really worry about. But going forward, when we scale up the prototype, obviously, we're going to have to pay more attention to the risk assessment before any experiments can be conducted. Next slide, please. So what are the next steps? Going forward, as Damien has mentioned in the timeline, we're hoping to optimize the design and incorporate the circuitry designed side of things. We're hoping to be able to operate Draco autonomously. So we will look into the interface and um, possible coding side of things. Um, more, moreover, we're looking at possible thermal control because we're using a lot of coils and also circuits on, on the top lid. So that's definitely something we need to consider. And also we're gonna look into stress analysis as well because we want to try to tailor Draco into sort of extreme environments and make sure everything is well within its operational temperature range. And next slide, please. Last but not least, protocols would be something that we have to be closely monitoring. Um, because once the project is going forward, we want to make sure that we have very detailed protocols to ensure a quality experimental result and also safety for the astronaut. Next slide, please. So this is a team. We have Damien, Eden, me, Francis, Akshay, and Draco itself. Thanks for your attention. Hope you like that. All right. Great job. Wonderful. Okay, so at this time, of course, we will take uh, we'll take questions. So I would like to start with the mentors again. Do any mentors have any questions? Yeah, I, actually, I do. I have one. Uh, first of all, congratulations. This was a really interesting uh, topic and really interesting presentation. Uh, I was just wondering concerning your your CAD drawing that was not any scales. So what would be the size of your um, of your the prototype or uh, yeah. the system you'd like to build? Of course. So um, because for this prototype, we're looking to first of all insert the astronaut's forearm into the tank. So the width of it would be about 45 to 50 uh, centimeters. Height would be 1.5, just um, including the basis of the top lid as well. We're not included the um, top, the complete top lid because that's where most of the components are going to be. So that's going to be um, confirmed. And yes, yeah, so we looked at like sort of average like man arms length just to make sure that could actually be doable. Okay, okay, I see, makes sense, thank you. No worries. And um, I have a question too, did you include, maybe I didn't see it, but did you include any weights of your system? 
Oh, no, but um, for the cost budget, we did do a volume sort of for the whole design just to make sure we know kind of how much material we would need for it. And that's how we got to the cost. But if that's needed, we can always send it over because that's on SolarWorks as well. Yeah, just to make sure because uh, whenever we're sending something to space, it needs to be really uh, yeah. weight effective. Okay. Actually, I think it's just the whole thing, even just the tank, it's just, Damien, do you remember the number? It was just... It's definitely under 70 kilograms, wasn't it? Uh, I remember the copper, um, uh, the copper components were under at least uh, three, uh, three grams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. The, the only, um, um, not that, um, I mean, the Pyrex is very, very uh, lourd. I don't remember how to say that in English. Heavy. 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 Yeah. And the top and bottom lip, we're aiming to use carbon fiber as well. So right. we are hoping to have like a lightweight, high temp melting point, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. No worries. Um, I had a question, um, can I ask? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, basically um, copper reacts with the UV radiation and promotes the charge transfer process, um, you know, from an O atom to carboxyl atoms. So is there any specific material or the coating that you have thought to prevent the mechanism from the reaction with the UV rays from the sun, of um, course, because um, moon yeah. has literally no atmosphere. Yeah, so the basic idea of the decontamination chamber is going to be well within the lunar base. Regarding the copper and material wise, um, the first sort of risk that we could think of is actually the, um, because the metallic plates are going to be charged. We want to make sure like the astronaut is safe. So in the top lip, I've actually included the, the insulation part. But regarding the reaction sort of between the copper and also the um, UV light, um, we can, it's something that we can always work on and sort of optimize our design as the timeline suggests. Yeah. Thanks so much. Um, Thank um, my questions. major concern was just the radiation. That's the reason I asked it. Yeah, of course. Thanks for the question. Thank you so much. Can I, can I add something? This, yes, Francis. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Okay, the, the top lead of uh, Draco is made of carbon fiber. And yeah. um, the carbon fiber and the, the, the sides are made of pyrex. Yeah. So there is a limited risk of direct contact between the copper um, parts of Draco with the radiations you, we are talking about. And there is also possibility of um, incorporating other materials that could help to shield the incoming radiation. All the copper parts are within, inside Draco. There is no copper part exposed that can receive direct um, solar radiation. Thank you. Thanks, Francis. Okay, I have uh, maybe one last question and then we'll go on to a, a, a short break. Uh, my question is, uh, I like your design, but are you worried about any of the parts becoming uh, jammed, right? So if dust or different mm -hmm. particles get in there and the operating uh, conditions that you're working at, are you concerned that some of the parts like the sliding tray or the, the two trays would get uh, jammed? Yeah. Um, so. Basically, what I'm thinking of is because of the coils are going to repel the lunar dust away, um, our main concern of sort of any accumulation of lunar dust would be within the grid that's at the bottom. Um, I can send it over the video in a bit, and it's actually a slotting mechanism where you can just slide it out quite easily, and like the astronaut can actually just clean it quite easily as well. Um, on the side, it's carbon fiber, it's not really that reactive, and it's insulating the copper plates, so it's also flat surfaces as well. So um, we're presuming that it's going to be easy to clean, but obviously that could be something that we could explore further in the protocol. Mm 